Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokonomana YouTube with a, another modeling video. Strangely enough in a different venue according to the acoustics and background. We'll be reviewing and cleaning the Sparmax Max 3 and the um, compressor that it's accompanied with. Uh, it's a very small 240, 220 volt compressor where it only um, pumps out approximately 15 psi, nice and low for uh, my use and it's a uh, very small, low weight and can take storage devices so it turns off when it's at power. Comes with a bunch of uh, interesting bits and pieces including um, a regulator and the silver bullets which is a moisture trap just before the airbrush. Silver bullet's very clever as this end sticks in the airbrush and this end on the hose. Water gets trapped in this little reservoir and you bleed it out by pushing that. Extremely clever. The compressor is completely lightweight compared to my hand and it's got an interesting vinyl cover. You get a bit of a dial on the side and a hose. There's a piston motor inside and it's absolutely silent. The little airbrush holder is one of the most impressive compressors I've ever used and with the ability of just adding a post tank so it's very easy to drain and remove whenever as well as uh, storage transportation and awesome for indoors I do intend on replacing my older Delta with this model here's a demonstration on how silent it is fills very quickly Dial goes up to 20 something psi. And it's constant at about 13, 14. Goes up and down a bit. It would not hurt to have a 8 inch um, regulator. And you can see how silent it roughly runs at that my voice is very clear over the initial of the motor running. Later, I'll show you how to make your own air tank. With the compressor out of the way, we shall review the airbrush, the Max 3. This uh, airbrush comes with the compressor in some deals. And uh, this one is the case. Uh, comes with an extra valve to make it a single action. Do not know why you would want to do that. One eighth um, inch uh, fitting. Retails for around the uh, eighty dollar mark, and it comes with a fairly uh, swish looking lunchbox. Now this is a second hand airbrush, it's been used and it's pretty well gunked up and fucked so we're going to be pulling it apart, cleaning it and seeing how we uh, go. I can notice the back is kept on it which is um, unlike me, a universal spanner and uh, this very unusual valve. Included in uh, this that I never really use, I suppose it's for cleaning out the cup. Instruction guide. It's not even the same um, type of uh, airbrush, so that's redundant. And a diagram of uh, pulling it apart, uh, very similar to your classic DH uh, 103. That is Max 3. Catalog uh, for the parts. Um, the Max 2, Max 3 is the same besides the nozzle and needle size. And you just get a heap of uh, instructions about uh, air um, pressure and tips to uh, prepare the paint and uh, whatnot. These instructions are actually uh, fairly handy. It is uh, very worthwhile uh, reading it all and uh, being very familiar. Um, when you are opposed or uh, given a new piece of equipment, uh, 
it is highly appropriate to read the instructions as the manufacturer is better to know how to properly maintain, clean and operate over what other aftermarket or um, surplus or extra information is given to you via uh, tutorials, hobby magazines, YouTube channels or whatnot. That aside, we'll start pulling apart the airbrush. Now when you buy an airbrush the most important thing is to pull it apart and put it back together and just have an understanding of all the working bits for when you do maintenance or need to troubleshoot. Once you're familiar with the working bits you just have an immediate much better idea of how everything works. So two things you should be very um, careful of is the needle and the nozzle if any damage is to occur to them which uh, I'm not the last one to use this airbrush so it is uh, well and truly fucked you need to be extremely careful of the needle if you drop it or do any damage uh, and the needle uh, bends or uh, breaks or is unstraightened your paint's going to splatter so this you need to protect quite thoroughly as well as the nozzle which is kept under here the nozzle damages in different ways it can tear or if the airbrush is pushed too hard against it or if it's bent um, it's also not going to uh, spray properly so never allow the tip while attached to the airbrush to make any contact with any surfaces with any force what we're going to do is we're going to pull apart all the compon components and with the uh, Teflon washers in this airbrush give it an ultrasonic clean it will need that from time to time but uh, after the clean, the first thing you should always do to your airbrush once it's in multiple pieces is lubricate it. And we will uh, demonstrate the uh, lubrication process. The nozzle can be removed using the spanner that comes with your airbrush kit. So it's very important not to lose it as other tools could uh, crush the tip of the nozzle. When you're adding it back on, and I will explain, uh, do it ever so lightly and tighten it with the strength of one finger. Over tightening it will uh, shear the thread off and uh, break your nozzle in half leaving the thread still stuck in the airbrush and that leaves you in a very very tricky situation. The needle and nozzle, the most consumable components, can be replaced by buying um, a 0.3mm uh, version for the high sing airbrushes which is compatible with this and they uh, retail for about a dollar a component. And you can see whoever's used it last um, has an absolute uh, chock of uh, paint. So this is all the external stuff removed. Uh, this is the air solenoid. The um, air plug goes in there. When this pushes down, it allows air into the airbrush. And the rest of the components here allow the trigger to go backwards, which pinches the needle here and pull it backwards. Pushing the trigger down, activates this component and there should be another component filling a um, valve hole. So this has a very long thread to prevent leaking and you can see that there is a spring, this and a tongue component piece along a pole. This makes for insertion of the tongue very very easy. It goes in like that. Other airbrushes have that um, disconnected and it takes quite a while to align it up. There's also a T-piece inside which is the hardest component to get in but it's a lot quicker compared to the Hyacin and other models of airbrush. Be careful not to lose it. So this is your airbrush completely dismantled. There is one more component, a screw at the very back which you should not attempt until you're quite experienced. has a washer hiding behind it. That will need to be only replaced once or twice throughout the entire life of your airbrush. When you're ready to replace that, you should be uh, well and truly experienced. And what you can do is throw everything into the ultrasonic cleaner, excluding the uh, nozzle, the needle, the air solenoid, unless it's got paint on it. And there's a few other components. If there's just no paint on it whatsoever, it just doesn't really need to go in, period. So I'm going to give these parts a clean. And... Uh, reassemble it with some lubricant on it. So we can see that uh, everything is filled with uh, thinner. 
in a container and it's going into a jewelry ultrasonic cleaner. Ultrasonic cleaners can be found online quite cheap. If you don't have that, you'll have to wipe down each component uh, by hand with a tissue, uh, clean out the actual um, brush itself with a pipe cleaner or an airbrush uh, bottle cleaner. And if you have to go as far as soaking it, soaking it for a little while in the appropriate thinner that you would use for the type of paints. If you only use acrylic, you would uh, soak it in probably Dettol or uh, window cleaner if it's enamel, um, turpentine, if it's uh, anything else including lacquer based, only general purpose and lacquer thinner. You see the cloud of uh, dirt rising up. You may want to do this for about 20 minutes or so. You also want to clean the needle. Just a little thinner on the tissue. And give it a bit of a good old fashioned scrub. Make sure that it's absolutely clean. Um, it's very rare to actually have an airbrush this taped on. It is a communal airbrush and uh, not owned by me. But if you don't ever let your airbrush to get this uh, into this much disarray, you do not have to do a cleaning process like this often at all. This is only in between big projects or after long periods of uh, time. Now for my finger, I'm pushing my nail up against the needle and I'm pushing up just to feel if there's a hook. If there is a hook, I'm going to straighten it out, which I actually feel on here. And you either hope that it breaks off or it hooks out. After a while you can get a fine grit sandpaper and hone the points to make it uh, sharp again. So you can extend the life out of the needle part of the nozzle. So after about 10 minutes of that, not too long, as uh, you will wear out the washers after uh, far too many cleans, we can see that there is no paint attached to it whatsoever. You will want to make sure that uh, you give everything a good royal wipe down to remove any last remnants of um, coloured uh, thinner as you can see there there's a bit of green and with a swab just uh, wipe out the innards which you can see there's still a bit of paint left on the washers and the very back but that's not too bad once we um, grease it all up that's going to improve it significantly. Putting on the nozzle, we screw it on, load on the wrench. That was a bit silly. And then once you get a little resistance, only if one finger and tighten slightly and that's it with the strength of one finger and that's enough strength for the nozzle to stay on. With a uh, bit of petroleum jelly what we will do and q-tips or cotton buds just slightly greased up you want to go over all the threads careful not to get any of the um, lubricants into uh, the air lines or the paint lines and you want to completely grease up the internals especially the back of the airbrush around here and the air solenoid in the event that there is any paint leak that has occurred by a beginner using it and pulling the um, needle out uh, while those paints present inside uh, the lubricant will catch the paint as well as um, not allow metal on metal to rub against each other quite tightly when you have metal on metal and there's just the tiniest amount of paint that gets in there it's going to completely seize up and uh, not want to operate and glue it together uh, a lot like an adhesive with lubricant it's always going to move freely just like moving parts that you have in a car or an engine or uh, something like that and if there is any paint leaks, the paint will always remain um, wet with the uh, lubricants. Don't put too much or otherwise it will be too hard for the mechanisms to operate. And that's about how much uh, lube you want to put inside. Every time you do give it a soak or a thorough clean, it will need to be re-lubed. With the rest of the components out of the thinner, 
sufficiently dry, we shall uh, put it all together appropriately. And as always, lubricate any thread and uh, apply it together uh, obviously in a timely manner in a way where we're practicing and studying how to uh, put it together now with the internals the first we deal with is uh, the air solenoids so that part is already uh, greased up Grease up the other end. The lubricant also when it goes in the thinner um, does protect the uh, rubber washers. There are some rubber washers even though the rest are uh, Teflon. Then we put in thinner there and we, not thinner, lubricant. And we lubricate this uh, brass T-piece. If this gets jammed it will shatter when it goes uh, in and out of um, position to allow air in, in to allow air in, out to block. So you drop that in and we use the rear of the needle, which is a very handy tool and should not be feared. It's the tip of the tool that you fear. And you position it in so when you push the needle in, there is resistance and it's bouncing back. And if we uh, take out the solenoid, you can see the brass bit in there. Next, we're going to be putting in uh, this combination of components, the spring. So I'm going to fill the inside with uh, lubricant. Put in the spring, and this whole piece will be lubed everything up till the thread the thread we can lube later because it will be sticking out this can get gunked up only in rare uh, circumstances but if it's all greased up then the chances of that happening is uh, very very minimal we put that in give it a bit of a test and with the tongue in first you just tip it in push it in a bit see it pop up and then we just screw in the rest excellent the trigger which we probably should have put in first but that doesn't matter too much just add a little loop make sure that nothing gets uh, stuck onto it now you want to make sure that the piece with the hole going through it is going in the direction of the needle. Pull that up, put it in, twist down, and when you push down you should be able to feel the uh, air solenoid springing back up. We lubricate only half the needle, the back half. You should lubricate it quite regularly after every use. Um, I don't get around to doing that. And that's probably why it gets stuck. Push it in gently so we know it's coming out of uh, the nozzle. If you push too much, you will stress out the nozzle and eventually split it. Lube the last end of the strip. Put the uh, needle nut on. When you pull back, it should glide back very, very, very smoothly. And this is the ultimate operation of your airbrush. It should work absolutely perfectly. If you want to keep the back, just lubricate the last thread. Screw it out with the back screwed out as far as possible. It's going to be a bit greasy. Give it a bit of a wipe down with thinner, except for the hose um, thread. And this is done. This is a completely maintained, greased up, ready to go airbrush. 
I'm going to put thinner in it to flush it out in case there's any uh, fluid. And then we're going to do a test spray by spraying some lines on a piece of paper. That will also get any um, contaminants or um, lubricant left over in there. And when you put in your first round of proper paint for proper painting on a model, it should be absolutely perfect. I'll uh, demonstrate that as well as how to do the uh, bubble jet method. Make sure you put your um, spanner away as you will need that at a later date. At this stage I have to use a different air compressor due to circumstances. Uh, please mind that and mind you that this Sparmax compressor is absolutely outstanding and um, normally I ask not to take my word for it but it is the case. Put a bit of thinner into your Sparmax. Finger right at the nozzle, pushing deep. You push down and you pull back. The air cannot go out the front, it's going out the top. This is called the bubble jet technique. It's good for when you're changing paint, when you're cleaning out paint. And at this rate, we're cleaning out lubricant if there is any in there. After that, one of these are really good to purchase. This is also of the Sparmax brand. Very old. And then you empty the contents by spraying it out into the pot, uh, preventing airborne um, thinner mist and a bit of a mess. Just keep spraying until it's completely empty. Now I've got some pre-mixed paint. Uh, mix your paint with uh, thinner before you add it to the cup. Do a bit of a test. I've got a brand spanking nozzle inside it. And following the tips from my Honing Your Airbrush Skills series, we're going to start um, spraying air off the paper. Go where we want to start, pull back a bit, and we're going to practice painting lines. And you can see brand spanking new airbrush there is no fuzz there is no spluttering we've got a very nice neat line and the trick is when we paint lines we want to make it as close to as a line drawn by a biro or a technical pencil And you can imagine with fine lines this fine, with a lot of practice, every month, load up your airbrush, paint some lines, get it as thin as possible. If there's problems, it's telling you that there's something you need to do to your airbrush to uh, improve it, fix it, replace a part, clean it, something. But when you've done lines for the first time, you know what the original condition is of your airbrush well before you start uh, painting models and doing stuff as looking at camouflage or a coloured in piece is a lot harder. Now this is a wonderful airbrush and it has a lot of fantastic versatile elements to it and holding it back you can see that there's not too much overspray and you can dust on and colour in areas quite beautifully as well as painting really fat lines. To paint and colour in a surface I hold the airbrush about 10 to 15 centimetres away start spraying off and you just do passes of single lines and that's the way to colour in to get a really good even finish if you're only colouring, um, you do it over many layers, it's quite transparent, so if you only want to change or filter a colouring in the area, or you want to get good coverage, that's good. If you only want to paint a small area, you can get a small line, 
and you can colour in only a certain area. Mind you that you may need a finer airbrush to get more um, subtle control such as painting the top of this hatch. A lot of that takes a lot of practice but it is quite worth it. If you want to get into some really fine stuff like uh, shading and special effects and whatnot, maybe a 0.2 or 0.1 airbrush is appropriate. Though you can see the awesome control you have with a well maintained airbrush and a very high quality airbrush. I find this to be uh, the standard of what a good airbrush and a hard workhorse is. Doesn't damage easily in the hands of a beginner. The only mistake you can make is damaging the nozzle, the needle, and buying quite a few of those cheap. You're really well and ahead of the game. When you're done airbrushing, changing a colour, or you're finished, Remove the cap, dispose or return the paint to where it's come from, and wipe the inside. You may also want to wet the um, tissue in um, thinner. Make sure there is no more paint in the airbrush whatsoever, so nothing sprays out. Carefully remove the needle, wipe that clean, you definitely need some thinner on your tissue to do that as it's already started to dry. You never want paint to dry in the needle or the nozzle as uh, the paint will not flow out properly and it will cause you all sorts of uh, issues. Once that is uh, very nicely done, we uh, return the needle back in the airbrush. Do not allow it to hit any surfaces if it hits a dead end lightly. Take it out, pull the airbrush apart, find out what's gone wrong. Add a bit of thinner into the cup. You can see that the thinner in there is blue. Bubble jet technique as I taught you. Spray the thinner out to clean out the nozzle. Empty out and repeat until the uh, thinner that goes in there after jet bubbling is absolutely clear. You also find that the um, nozzle crown has quite a bit of paint in there and that needs to be returned or cleaned. Pull the trigger back so the needle's not sticking out. Wet a Q-tip with thinner and swab it out do this with every colour change and eventually like so I find about three flushes you have um, clean thinner you can return it and that's a well maintained airbrush to be put into storage or to accept its new colour after many many projects builds up and issues occurring that's when you dismantle and do a thorough clean out there is uh, tutorials on that on uh, my YouTube channel, which uh, does explore that in much greater detail. Your compressor also does need uh, maintenance. I do apologise I don't have the proper one. Water trap should be drained after every colour. If there is a tank, that needs to be drained. And when you're finished airbrushing, disconnect the hose and make sure there is no air in the cylinder. If you leave air in the cylinder and turn it on again, it has a great way of uh, blowing gaskets and o-rings. By draining the air every time, you're guaranteeing a long life of your airbrush. Um, even though it can stay silent and hold air for long periods of time it leaks and starts on, it's good to keep your airbrush and compressor off when you're not using it to extend its life. It's a bit pointless to show off examples of finished works. Uh, the Max 3 is an upgraded version of the DH-103. The DH-103 is what I've used for about 70 to 80 percent of uh, all my models. So you can get an idea of uh, the full capacity of it. The output is exactly the same. The internals are far more superior and improved for the sake of uh, maintenance, especially with some of the uh, Teflon um, O-rings. The uh, 
cup is a lot easier to clean and uh, it's just uh, funnels paint in a lot more sufficient manner and it's harder for our uh, backflow of uh, paint going back into the internals of the um, air solenoid so in the end uh, as a general workhorse I do recommend jumping on the Max Free. You can still find some older DH-103 stock on the internet cheap. Uh, sometimes it's labelled uh, as uh, Tamiya and it's stock in Japan, which there's still plenty going on around there. They go for uh, way too much. It's uh, best to avoid that. Uh, check out local suppliers. Everyone in Australia, your local hobby shop or uh, hobby co, um, does get them in from uh, time to time. Uh, make sure it is labelled as Max 3 and not uh, just uh, Sparmax or Tamir Sparmax or Sparmax DH103. If you are buying the older model, make, make sure that you buy at a much cheaper rate. The uh, box on the right is the old box that I bought more than uh, 10 years ago. It's, uh, as you can see, very well uh, weathered and well loved. This is an airbrush I've enjoyed for a very long time, and even though I may be going on to more expensive and fancy models, uh, it'll always be good for priming, base coating, top coating, all that sort of stuff as uh, well controlled. Um, there is not too much overspray, so it makes it pretty good for um, finishes, uh, your glosses and mattes and all that sort of stuff. All in all, Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them in the comment below. Anything that's asked is a question. I'm very interactive, and we'll jump on and uh, answer it. I do have a Facebook account where we have very regular updates of work in progresses, other projects, inspirational material, and um, references. Uh, there is a Twitch account to go on there occasionally and model live, so uh, that's an area to ask questions and just uh, hang out, and a Patreon just as a tip jar and nothing else if you feel inclined. If you've got any suggestions, especially in the airbrush realm as we're in that, that area, um, throw them out. I want to make as much airbrush content as possible to give out as much information for people to be comfortable and have the right knowledge of how to do things. I'm constantly doing uh, experiments and whatnot to improve myself and improve uh, knowledge and awareness out there and just trying things that have not quite been tried before with uh, the amount of cheap airbrushes and resources this channel has. So um, if you want to see a brand or something that's been trialed that I haven't played with before, I will at least look at it or ask around if uh, someone's willing to uh, give me one, sponsor me one, lend me one. Um, to test out and review and do a full um, comprehensive uh, pull apart. We'll catch you guys next time.